So yesterday I was having a, another dilemma with one of my classes because I kept asking them what or means and what and means, and they're giving me the wrong stuff. So I want to start off by re reviewing what that means. When we have to find a, a probability, and it says find the probability, I can't find it. Find the probability of this or this happening. What are we supposed to do with our two probabilities? We add them. Yes. Yesterday, um, I kept I kept asking that question, and I asked it more than once. I asked it like three times to one class, and they kept saying multiply. This is something you guys have to memorize. This is actually pretty basic in probability. Or means to add the probabilities together. And it is going to come into what I'm going to teach you today. Today we're going to talk about how to find probabilities from, um, from tables or frequency tables or however you want to call them. But they're basically like two-way charts. They show you totals if you go across them and they show you totals if you go down them. And some of these key words, they're going to impact how you calculate those probabilities. Okay, the next one. The next one is and. When you're calculating a probability and it says the word and then, what do you have to do mathematically? You have to multiply. Now, in a picture, yesterday we were talking about Venn diagrams. What does and mean in a Venn diagram? What part of the circles would we look at when it says and? It's overlap part, right? I want to start calling it something different, though. I'm going to call it the intersection. The reason I'm bringing this up is because when we work with tables, there will be intersections, and we're going to use those in some of our probabilities. Um, for the complement, don't forget that when you do a complement, basically it's saying, like, what is the probability of this not happening? What you could do is, instead of adding everything else up, you could just take 1 minus the actual event, and that will give you your probability. So like, let's say um, I, I give you a, a table that has all kinds of information on it. It's got like 20 categories going across and 20 categories going down. If I wanted to say what's the probability of this not happening, it would be a lot faster if you just use the complement formula. Because think about it, if I gave you a table with 20 things going across and 20 things going down, there's like 400 things in there. It's faster to subtract the one thing that you uh, know versus adding up everything else. So that might be useful today in what we're going to be doing. Okay, so um, these are sort of like the formulas when we calculate probabilities within a table. You don't really have to memorize them. If you guys remember, um, if you guys remember doing the deck of cards, do you guys remember doing mutually mutually exclusive with the deck of cards? Remember how I was highlighting them so you can see if they're overlapping or not? Um, I think highlighting or do, writing on the table helps big time. But if if that doesn't make sense to you, these are the basic things that you have to do. Um, in order to calculate a probability. So anytime you're given a certain event, let's say an AND problem, an AND problem is the intersection of the two events in the table. So if you have an AND problem, you're going to get one that goes up and down, you're going to get one that goes across, so you use that number. So an AND intersection looks kind of like this. So you use this and this. So that part right there is the part that we would use in the top of our probability. The bottom is the grand total. Now, the way these tables are set up, your grand total is always located in the bottom right corner. So when I ask you to find the probability of this and this happening, you find the intersection that goes on top, and then you tell me the grand total that goes on the bottom. Uh, if I say an or, if I say an or, it's going to be helpful to highlight those columns and rows to see if there's any overlap. If there's any overlap, you're going to do you're going to add the totals from row A to the total for row, uh, column B. They're going to add them together, which is what OR means anyways. But then if they overlap each other, you have to do the subtraction of the intersection. And again, it's also over the grand total. Um, the given stuff, this directly lends itself to what I told you yesterday about Venn diagrams. If you remember what we talked about, 
If I have the given with the slash like this, you can kind of slant it to the side and it makes a fraction. Whatever is right here is always going to be the one that goes on the bottom. And in the top, it's going to be both. So that's, that's called the intersection of event A and event B. And then again, if it says not A, you take the entire total, which is in the bottom right corner, and then just subtract the probability of um, the, the A column or the A row, whatever it ends up being. Now, I know looking at this without an actual table doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're going to do this right now uh, on the next page. I couldn't fit a table on the same page with these instructions. So if you want, you can put back and forth. I don't really care. Um, so this says, a study was conducted to help determine high school students' interest in types of books. A random survey was distributed throughout the school asking, what genre of book are you most interested in? The results of the study were organized into the following table. Now, when you guys get to your assignment, there's going to be a table that's partially filled in, and your job is to fill in the rest. So it's not really that hard. It's kind of like a puzzle. If there's only three boxes and you know two of them, you should be able to find the third box. So that's how you're going to do it in your assignment. So we're going to calculate some of these probabilities. So the first probability is the probability that someone likes mystery. So that's the genre of book that they enjoy. So we go like this. Here's mystery. So if we're going to do the probability, this probability is calculated by all of the people that like mystery, which is found right here. So it's 25. Come on, I don't like this part of the board. 25 over the grand total, 172. And I think if you try to reduce that, I don't think it works. So that's your answer. Now, as we go through these examples, I'm going to sort of highlight in any race, but also there's this key word again. And when it's an and problem, look at the two events that it's talking about. So I'm going to highlight science fiction. So it's this one. And I'm going to highlight 12th grade. So it's this one. So an and problem is the intersection. And if you look at the formula that was on the back page, I'll flip back and forth. An and is the intersection over the grand total. So in the problem that we just found, the intersection is this 9. So that's the top number. And the grand total, still 172. Okay, I'm going to erase the highlighter stuff. Okay, the next one. The next one is an or. So an or means we're going to have to add some stuff. So it says history or adventure. So I'm going to go like this. History or adventure. I have a question for you. This is, uh, this is an adding problem. Am I going to have to subtract? No, there's no overlap. So when we calculate this probability, we're just using the totals. So all of the people that like history and all of the people that like, was it sci-fi? I forgot. Oh, it's right here. No, adventure. So it's 28 out of the 172 people. So 41 plus 28 is 69 out of 172. And there's no need to subtract because when we highlight it, nothing overlapped. So no one got double counted. So here's, here's, a, here's an example of a compliment. So we want to find the probability that these people didn't like bi uh, biographies. So I'm going to go through and highlight the biographies. Biography, biography, right here. These are my biography people. So the way we do this is we take the grand total 172, and just subtract all the biography people from it, which is the same as adding the rest. Like if you just add the rest of them, then you'll get the same exact number, but this one right here just ends up being over 172. 
So 172 minus 36. Is that 136? And these are both even, so I know they're going to reduce. What is it? 34 over 43. There's our probability. Okay, the next one says the probability of mystery or 11th grade. So I'm going to go through and highlight and make sure. I need to see. I already know or is plus. So mystery or, I forgot what it said. 11th grade. 11th grade, okay. Or 11th grade. So an or problem means plus. Do I have to subtract on this one? Yes, there's overlap. This nine people right here, they get counted twice. They get counted once when I count the 11th graders and once when I count the mystery. So they get counted twice. So let's see what the numbers are. Uh, 38 and 25. So an or problem is to add the 38 plus the 25, but then we have to subtract the 9, and that's all out of 172 people. Is that 52? 63, take away 9. What is it? 54, close. 54 over 172, but then those are even again, so I know those reduce. 27, 27 over 86. Okay, so here's here's the one that has the the line right here. So remember what this means. When it has the line, it means the intersection of both over the adventure. Because think of this as the fraction bar. Adventure is on the bottom. So let's let's go take a look at that in the in the chart. Ah, I forgot what they were again. We have ten. And adventure. So here's 10. Here's adventure. So the way this probability is calculated is you put the um, 12 people from the intersection over um, the people from adventure. How many people were in adventure? 41. So 12 out of 41. <laughs> Now, if we switch it, adventure and then 10, that changes just a little bit. Um, the intersection is still the same, though, right? Still 12. But out of how many people this time? Yeah, this time it's out of 44. And I know that because the second one is always the bottom number. And that reduces to 6 over 3 over 11. So it's 3 out of 11. Okay, so um, yesterday we had a conversation on the side, the, the board on the side over here, not the actual smart board. And I asked you a question about things that are independent of each other. I, I told, well, I didn't ask you if they were independent. I told you they were independent. Then I asked you about their probabilities. I'm going to go over that one more time because this is going to be important in deciding whether or not two categories are independent of each other. So if two events are independent, that means if I do the probability of A and compare it to the probability of A versus B, they're going to be, well, not A versus B, A, given that B has occurred, they're going to equal each other because B has no impact on A. So in this problem, we're going to calculate two different probabilities. We're going to look at their decimals, and we're going to see if they're almost exactly the same. Now, there's, there's, there are problems where they are exactly the same, but there's going to be some problems where they're close, and depending on like what decimal place, that's how we'll decide whether or not they're approximately like equal to each other. So here's, here's what we have. We'll call this event A, and we'll say this is event B. If we want to test if these are independent of each other, here's what we need to calculate. Let's calculate the probability of A. And let's compare it to the probability of A 
given that B has occurred. And we're going to get all this information from the table. So what's the probability of adventure? Let me erase this. So if I do the probability of adventure, there are 41 people that like adventure. So this is 41 out of 172. Okay, and then the other event is the probability of A given that B has occurred. So we want to find the intersection between adventure and 10th grade. So here's 10th grade. So this is 12. So we've got 12 on top over, yeah, so it's going to be out of 44. Now on these, to make our comparison, we want to actually use the decimal. So type them in the calculator and tell me what the decimals are. It's going to be 0. Point something. I know that for sure. So all probabilities are going to be 0, 1. What is it? 0.24. For the first one? Okay, 0 0.24 and 0 0.27. Is that after you guys rounded? Let me ask you this. Let's go three numbers. What was it three numbers for the first one? 238. 238? Oh, God, how did I erase? Oh, that was the worst thing I ever did. Hold on. 238, and is that already rounded? So what's the number after the 8? Okay, so it is rounded. So 238. What was this one? 272. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to argue that these ones are not close enough. So these ones are not independent of each other. Um, when, we, when we try to see, like, when we try to see if they're independent of each other, if they're independent of each other, we probably want to go more than one decimal place. So I would say a minimum of two decimal places for these numbers to match. If they were to match, like let's say one was 0 0.245 and the other one was 0 0.246, that's close enough. That's to the nearest hundred. So that's, that's approximately equal. So then we would say that they are independent of each other because they're close enough to being exactly the same. But if, the, if it's only the first number that matches, I don't think that's good enough. So these ones are not independent. Independent. Ah, I never wrote a cursor. So those are my examples. If you guys turn the page, now I have examples for you to try. So I'll give you about two minutes. No, maybe three. Okay, guys, I'm going to show the, um, the answers, but I don't think I, I didn't reduce them because I was doing it on the computer and I didn't want to reduce them. But this is the work that you should have done to get your answers. And then here's the last one. The final answer is yes, they are independent. The reason why is because when you type them in the calculator and turn them into a decimal, you get this. In fact, they're exactly the same. So here's what that means. The probability of uh, selecting someone whose favorite sport is basketball is 0. 0.667. The probability of selecting that someone's favorite sport is basketball given that they're in eighth grade is still 0. 0.667. So that means that it didn't matter that they were in eighth grade. So that's the reason why these are independent. The probability that someone likes basketball is the same whether they're in eighth grade or not. So that's what makes it an independent event. The event B is not in, uh, affecting the other event from occurring. They're the same exact probabilities. So that's how you test whether or not they're independent of each other. Uh, and that was it. That was the final lesson. So your Assignment is going to be all the uh, the tables. They're going to ask you a bunch of questions from the tables, just like we did right now.